Hey guys, Justin here. Before we get to the lap, I know a lot of people lately have been asking me if there are any leagues that I recommend, so I wanted to shout out the sponsor of today's video, No Toad Racing League. No Toad Racing League was created back in 2002 for NASCAR racing season. If you're looking for a league that is both casual but also made for enthusiasts who want to drive clean, then No Toad Racing League is the one for you. So for more information, join their Discord server. All the races start at 9.30 EST and end by 11 PM. Their Cup Series is even broadcasted live on YouTube and their season champions have a personalized trophy made for them at the end of every three month season. Thank you once again to No Toad Racing League for sponsoring this video. It's just like, eventually those, those home builders are gonna meet the demand. The prices are gonna be a lot more reasonable. Oh, well, the second wreck pushed them across the start. Oh, All right, let's take a look at that. I like the first lap on this. I can see how second lap would be good too, so take it with a grain of salt. So for our run up here, we're gonna basically get on the brakes before we enter the corner. So you see how my car is still relatively straight here. This is for the out lap, and I'm just trying to be able to get on the throttle as early as possible and turn the car down the hill. So you see my initial throttle for the out lap is about 40 or 50%, and I wanna be kinda going pretty up close to the wall and then coming back down trying to make as straight of an exit as possible. Super important for Dover, because if you're stuck holding your wheel at a big angle at the exit of the corner, you'll just get super loose every time. So I make it a point to really even drive it as close to the line as possible. But if you get to the if you get to the apron too early, you might accidentally have a bad angle off the corner. So if you're gonna get all the way down to the apron like this, then you really want to make sure it's super duper late. So that's how I was able to get a good run here. And then the goal of both one and two and three and four for a Dover hot lap is just to be able to get on the throttle as early as possible. We're gonna go over some long run lines later where I talk about diamonding, but this car, it handles the same as the Arca car, but the extra power really adds another dimension to hot lapping because instead of getting on the throttle early and being able to wrap the bottom, we can now get on the throttle super duper early and be able to wrap the middle and then carry that speed and late apex the bottom. So. If you watch my ARCA video, you'll see how I ran just close to the bottom for the lap. Whereas here, drag the brake on entry, and now we're just running about half a lane to a full lane up, and then getting on the throttle extremely early, but only to partial. So how you can tell when to pick up the throttle is when the car stops fighting with you running down the hill. So you can see here, I have a set amount of wheel, more or less, and I'm doing an amount of brake that's constant. It's gonna make a tiny little move down the hill while holding this amount of brake and this amount of wheel. And then the moment it makes that move down the hill, we pick up the throttle to about half. Okay, so all that put together, oops, sorry. All that put together means that I can just pick up half throttle and just hold it and a new steering wheel uh, input. So about halfway through, we just hold that throughout the entire corner. And then as you can see, it turns back down the hill on its own. L look at here, look at my gas and look at my wheel and see how I did absolutely nothing to turn this car down the hill and yet the car did it on its own at the very end. That's exactly what I'm looking for because now I can make that late apex and carry all that speed and drive straight off the corner. If I were to just hook this middle all the way through, I would have had to hold my steering wheel at this amount for the rest of the corner and that's what causes you to get loose. And when you get loose in this car, that's what causes you to lose speed because you're just disengaging from the track. So I'm getting a little loose here, but it is not nearly as bad as it would be if I tried to just hook the middle all the way out the corner. So that's a very big thing to understand. We're gonna look at that one more time because this is a very tough corner. No, no pausing here, but we'll talk our way through it. So drag brake down the hill, pick the throttle up about one lane up, just hold half throttle to 60%. On its own, it's gonna start turning down the hill without any help. That's when I start unloading my wheel and making as straight of an exit as possible. And that's how we carry the speed. Okay, turn three and four. 
Very similar ideas, it's gonna feel a little bit different. So now I'm dragging my brake down the hill, pick up the throttle again about half a lane off the bottom, and just holding that input until the car turns back down the hill. And here, this is slightly different. Okay, so now I paused on the exact right moment. Look how loose I get. This is because, in particular, turn three and four does not have as much of that natural late apex as one and two does. We kind of have to wait on it a little bit longer in a normal race, but for a hot lap, we now have to kind of force it off the corner. So it's gonna be very loose and you're gonna have to rodeo it off the corner, but as long as you're aware of it, it's pretty manageable. These, these counter steers weren't particularly reactions. They were me kind of noticing that I was getting to a point where my car was about to snap and really just trying to work against it. And you can see that I actually did not even disengage my rears, even with as how extreme that wheel movement was. The car was pretty much staying straight the entire time. And that's what we're looking for. We want to get those preemptive wheel inputs so that you don't have to react to loose conditions. Okay, look at that one more time. Drag brake all the way to the lane from the bottom. Pick up the throttle. Hold it, hold it, hold it. It's going to turn down the hill a little bit, but you're going to have to just force throttle here. It's going to get loose off the corner, so we preemptive uh, turn the wheel. And then once we get that turn, then we get back on the full throttle. All right, so my long run approach is gonna be a little bit different to this line, so stick around and we'll go over that. All right, now let's uh, do some notes on long run here. So this is gonna end up being a lot like Arca, except uh, basically there's gonna be some differences on throttle and you're gonna be carrying a little more speed than they're used to. So the goal of this track is the same between Dover and Arca a couple weeks ago, uh, where we wanna make that diamond and use as little steering wheel as possible. Now the goal is to preserve the right front tire. So even in this Gen 4 car where it seems super duper loose, you still can burn off your right front by doing too much. So I'm doing this diamond here. And I'm just holding the throttle at like the 80-ish percent until I get on the straightaway. No need to really force the throttle early. So I just get to that partial throttle here and I just bring it back down the track and then full throttle once I'm pretty much on the straightaway. 23.661 So we're going to be a few tenths off of what our qualifying time was at because that was really using up a lot of tire in that middle lane. Here we're just really taking it easy because this is a long race. You might be able to get some really long runs in here. You might not because this is kind of proven to be not the longest runs always but later on in the week in the Gen 4 series you definitely might be able to see that. Passing is going to be very hard here. It's going to basically count on other people's mistakes. It's a little bit more multi-groove than Arca was. That second groove really can make speed on the short term. Although, if you use it too much, it might just really hurt you. At least with the right front. Because at the end of the day, as loose as you feel, there's just still a ton of load on the right front tire on entry and center. So I'm just kind of doing a line here that mitigates that. And as the tires heat up, it becomes even easier. So early off the throttle, drag the brake, aim at the bottom, let the car slide up, don't move the wheel. So the number one thing about long run at Dover is that you do not want to move the steering wheel at all in between this point here. Uh, it was a bad example, sorry, I'll do it in the next corner. But you don't want to move the steering wheel at all from where you make your first apex of the diamond up until you, your car moves back down the hill. So from here all the way to there. So you see how my wheel pretty much doesn't move at all for like the entirety of the corner? That's how we save tires. And I'll show you what it looks like if we're not doing that. So you see how I'm just holding the steering wheel and then straightening out on exit. But let's say that I'm gonna force it, right? I'm just turning the wheel, trying to turn it. So you see, I'm gaining a lot of time there. I gain like two seconds, or two tenths, right, right there. But that's not a sustainable line. It's gonna destroy your tires. So we actually can be like three tenths faster, but we're gonna be a heck of a lot slower. So maybe the answer is somewhere a little bit in between. 
but it also is kind of like a gamble of how long you think the run's gonna go. On short run, you definitely wanna do something like that, but on long run, you really wanna do that diamond with less steering input overall. Oh, you see, it gets really loose there. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, saved it. Point nine, mm -hmm. nine. But the more wheel input that you keep throughout the corner, the more likely you're gonna be to spin out. So I got my tires really hot, so this will be a good test here. So doing the diamond method, where I just hold the steering wheel on partial throttle and let it come back down the track itself, it's a little loose there, but it's pretty manageable. Whereas if I was cranking the wheel that whole corner, it would have been really tough. So you see how that, I, you can make the corners really easy on yourself by just not allowing yourself to turn the steering wheel very far. But the more that I turn the steering wheel, like so, like here, I turn the steering wheel more, might gain a little bit of speed on the short term, but now I'm really loose on exit. And I'm using a more right front tire. So you might want to push for speed a little bit on the early run just to kind of get a good gap for yourself, make up some time on people, get some pressure off your back. But when you get into the rhythm of the race and you're just making laps, I highly recommend using as little steering input as possible to get around these corners and just using your partial throttle to roll through the corner. This high line really isn't that bad on entry. See, I lose like a tenth on entry, but I'm able to straighten out the exit. I don't, I don't hate that line. I think it uses more tire though is the only problem. If you're looking for some short term speed, maybe uh, experiment with widening out your entrance, but I really think the shallow entry is where the save, tire saving is. And uh, I kept a little bit too much wheel in it as you can see there, but it's very difficult. Well, let's, let's bring it in here, kind of get a gist of what, how the tires are wearing. So you see 92.89. So actually with that right rear wear, well, I was because I almost spun out a couple times, but you really have to keep your car as straight as possible throughout the corner. And that diamond really helps with that because it really helps you keep uh, disciplined with not picking up the throttle too late. So... If you, if you really want to try that wider entry line, try to carry more speed, as long as you're not sliding your rear and heating up your right rear tire, then that might be for the best. It seems like right front's not too big of a deal, but still 92% of that stage of the run is still a lot for right front. So I personally recommend the Diamond, but I can see how if you're able to keep the car under you, it's pretty free flowing here. So just figure out what's more, most comfortable for you. Try to keep the car from spinning out too much and uh, you should be good to go. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.